one of these minor prophets to Israel, most likely near Samaria in the north, was Hosea, whose ministry was before the exile to Babylon. This book prophecies the results of the Israelites turning to other gods, the separation of their nation from the one true God, the subsequent disastrous results, and the eventual reconciliation. Moreover, God used Hosea's own life as a symbol for this relationship through the prophet's marriage to Gomer, who would be unfaithful to him. Why would God want Hosea to marry Gomer? What is the greater plan? What happens in the love story of Hosea and Gomer? The book of Hosea can be broken up into two thematic sections. There is the story of Hosea, Gomer, and their children, and there is the story of God and Israel. Both are stories of covenant relationships which get violated and then restored. God made a covenant relationship with Israel, promising to bless and protect them if they follow Him, worshipping only the one, true God. Marriage was instituted to be a lifelong promise between a man and a woman to be faithful and to help one another. Under the Lord's guidance, Hosea married Gomer, a woman he knew would commit adultery. The marriage would serve as a symbol for the relationship between God and his people. After King David's death, his son Solomon married hundreds of women from cultures all over the region, who worshipped many false gods. Theologians generally pinpoint this event as the reason that polytheism became more widely practiced in Israel. Eventually, Judah and Israel separated, becoming two separate kingdoms which had their own prophets. Hosea lived in the northern kingdom, and God chose him to live a life which illustrated the relationship between Israel and himself. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take to yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord, Hosea 1 verse 2. By setting this example, God wanted Israel to understand the extent of their sins. Gomer gave birth to three children whose names reflected the state of the nation. When they were born, their names were sad, symbolizing the turning away of the nation and the tragedy that would befall the people. The first son's name was Jezreel, because God said, I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. And on that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel, Hosea 1 verse 4. Their daughter was named Loruhama or No Mercy, because God would show no mercy. Hosea and Gomer, Separation and Reconciliation Gomer does leave Hosea and commit adultery, but eventually her husband retrieves her, taking her back into his home and forgiving her. This reconciliation foretold the future return to God the nation of Israel would make, and his forgiveness. Although Hosea would have been justified in divorcing Gomer, instead he redeemed her for thirty shekels of silver and they stayed together. Hosea and Gomer's reconciliation is a hopeful message that through redemption man can reconcile with God. The majority of the fourteen chapters deal with the specific prophecies about this separation from God and its eventual reconciliation, and beyond the sequence of events, little is known about Hosea's life, wife, and children. It does not discuss how he felt, only that he obeyed. Hosea was not the only prophet whose life reflected the state of the relationship between God and his people. Ezekiel, a prophet in Judah, was called by God to act out his life in such a way that it foretold the siege of Jerusalem in 587 BC. Why did God let bad things happen in the story of Hosea and Gomer? 
One of the biggest questions that arises from the life of Hosea is why God would orchestrate his obedient prophet's life in such a manner that Hosea would suffer so much. He married Gomer knowing she would be an adulteress, suffered the humiliation of her having multiple affairs, and gave his children sad names because of this marriage. Hosea was a prophet, obedient to his Lord, but still he suffered. It is a picture of a good man who has many bad things happen to him. During the prophetic communications in this book, God says, When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more they were called, the more they went away, they kept sacrificing to the Baals and burning offerings to idols. Hosea 11 verses 1 to 2. Over and over, the Lord emphasizes his love for his people, everything he did for them, and the heartbreak of seeing them chose false idols over him. Yet, he redeemed them anyway, after a period of chastisement and exile. Though the people of Israel and Hosea went through difficult times, God used the hardship. Forgiveness is one of the hardest acts for a sinful man. It is also a lesson of obedience to God, because sometimes believers are called to do hard tasks or make big sacrifices. Finally, there is a reminder of God's love and forgiveness. Even in the Old Testament, God was merciful and patient with Israel, just as He is with people today. A Summary of Hosea and Gomer's Love Story God told Hosea to marry Gomer, a prostitute. Hosea did as God asked and married Gomer. Gomer continued to go with other men. But Hosea stayed with her. Gomer continued to be unfaithful even after she had Hosea's children. But God told Hosea to stay with her. Hosea went so far as to pay a redemption price to buy his wife back. What does the book of Hosea teach us? God turned Hosea's life and marriage into a living parable. The lessons from Hosea and Gomer include God's eternal love for his people even when they sin. God will never give up on us, just as Hosea didn't give up on Gomer. God continues to love his people even when they sin. Just as Hosea paid a price to redeem Gomer, so did God pay a price by giving his son, Jesus, to redeem mankind. Broken, holy, loving. In the climax of his book perhaps it could be called the climax of the whole Old Testament Hosea tells us about God's heart. He changes the metaphor. Now it's not a husband's love for his unfaithful wife but a father's love for his disobedient and rebellious son. When Israel was a young nation, I loved them. I chose to bring my son out of Egypt. But the more I called out to Israel, the further they went away from me. I taught Israel to walk. I took them up in my arms. But they did not realize I was the one who took care of them. People of Ephraim, how can I give you up? Israel, how can I hand you over to your enemies? My heart is stirred inside me. It is filled with pity for you. My anger will not burn against you anymore. I will not completely destroy you. After all, I am God. I am not a mere human being. I am the Holy One among you. My burning anger will not come against you. Hosea chapter 11 verse 1 to 3 and 8 to 9.